<laughs> so, what's the formula? As anglers, we are constantly reminded just how much the details really mean. The best anglers observe many different aspects which in and of themselves have proven value. They calculate, do the math, and as a result, prove their abilities. Trust me when I say with these guys, it's not luck, it's much more. We will from here on assign a value to every detail in hopes of demonstrating just how important they are to you. So little time to fish, so many variables. Wouldn't it be nice to simply have guidelines such as the value of a lure or even more important the value of a structure you are fishing in relationship to other factors such as air temp, water temp, lunar cycle, barometric pressure and so on? <laughs> as a result of more than 30 years of musky fishing I'm about to do just that. Pay attention. I'm about to unlock the formula. Would you take a... Uh, look at this. Oh it just went down. <laughs> It just went down. Uh, you take a cool trend like that and then back it up on this lake with a bright sunny day and you get pretty happy, don't you? Instantly. Yeah, you like sun on this lake. They get up on these rocks pretty quickly. I'm getting us pretty close. I'm going to back us off, okay? I don't know what that was, but it was under it. What are you pulling? Plastic. Oh, look at it right there. It's right there. It just come up behind me. Huge fish. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Still with me. Oh, come on. She's still there. She's still there. She's still there. She's still there, Jody. Keep your loops wide. She's a big fish. That's the fish that followed me a second ago. <laughs> what do you say we turn the boat and come back up on that? What do you think, huh? Uh, sounds good. Yeah. I'll nice take, fish. Yeah, it's a very nice fish. I'm going to take us up. We'll turn the boat. We'll go right back across this. These fish are definitely coming up on the rocks to get their bodies warmed up. That was a big fish. I'm going to run us up here, and then I can turn the boat. We can come right back down over it again, okay? All righty. That's a 5-0 fish. Really, really close. When I spin, I'm going to spin it to my left, okay? Okay. Because I'm fishing the left side of the boat. All righty. I'll crank us around and go right back down over that. That's a big fish. We need that fish. She's up on top of the rocks. Folks, what's happening right now, this water temperature dropped last night considerably. Air temperatures went to 48 degrees, and the sky just cleared about an hour and a half ago, and these fish are already coming up on top of these rock piles. They may have been there the whole time, they just weren't responding. Weren't showing themselves. Yep. Yeah, they could have very easily been there the entire time. You throwing a jerk bait? Yeah. A lot of lure changing going on back there. It's in a state of panic. <laughs> state of panic. <laughs> she, that's what was under my bait when I first came in. I could see it was there. It was low, but I couldn't tell what it was. And then my next cast, it come back in again, except I'd take my bait out of the water too quickly. You were coming up and I looked and it went right back to the back of the boat with you. And that's when I first saw how big it is. Well, for getting up on top of these rocks, both those baits have little lips on them. Yeah. They dive a little bit. They're diving in it? Yeah. So I got to stay up out of there. Yeah. MNG is a great, great bait for that. Spinner baits, unlike bucktails, they have the ability to crawl over these rocks. You can actually make contact with the rock without hitting them, I mean, yep. without getting hung up, because the head hits. Right.
Keep your eyes open behind the bait. I can see boulders right there. Yep, hitting rocks. Yeah. Hit rocks that time. Here's one. Good fish, too. 50. What the hell? I don't know. <laughs> don't worry about it. Oh, barely hooked. Come on out the boat, baby. Come on. This way. There you go. I got to get her head turned, okay? Yep. Coming around to you. Oh, you sucker. That's okay. We'll bring her back. <sighs> if you have. Coming around. See, she's so lightly hooked. Yes, she's in our bag. <laughs> oh. Let me slide us forward, okay? Every aspect of this sport is dependent upon another. In this case, with Jody, we'll first examine the water temps. As noted, our water temps were on the rise. This is generally a good thing, promising higher activity, as would be the case with this example. But how does that relate to our structure? Simple. We chose a submerged structure with relative deep water access completely surrounding it. The reason? Our nights were getting very cold. So what does that mean to the fish? Why would this structure receive a value of 10 under these conditions when another might not? As the water temps drop from the evening through dawn, the muskie finds itself in some cases struggling to remain in its comfort zone. With the deeper water adjacent to the structure such as the one we have chosen, the muskie is allowed to simply sink below the cooling effects of the late season nights and return with little effort when conditions are more conducive. They burn far less energy as a result and prosper because of this instinctive habit. In short, we depended as they do on the vertical aspects of our submerged hump. Shut off. This is the power button. Just hit it once. It'll come back up again. You'll see your image in the back screen. We'll take a picture. I'm going to set it back on the back deck for you, okay? You bet. I'll sit it right here. Now, if that goes kaplunk, we're in trouble, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in review of our barometric pressure, you will quickly note that we were not in the best of times. 30.04 and steady is what I refer to as less than perfect. However, it is better than 30.04 and rising. The most interesting thing to note is what took place within one hour of this event. Due to the alarm on my angler's edge, we were made aware of improving conditions due to a slight drop in pressure. The next hour resulted in four follows, one of which was an event to see two 50-inch class muskies at the same time under my jackpot. It's truly incredible how quick and precise these creatures will exhibit their most instinctive habits relative to their environment. I'm right now it is. Thank you, baby. There it is. Oh, I got it now. You got Thank it. You. you got it. You got her. That lure come off that rock and she just come right after it. Wow, smoking Joe. Siri. This really is a close, close fish. Yeah. She really hammered that thing, didn't she? Oh, she ate it entirely. Look at that bait. You know, they can say what they want. Bait may be junk. I might be able to use it again, but the reality is, with that in the boat, the bait did what it's supposed to do. It exactly. served it well. <laughs> you got her? 
Now it's back up. Okay, okay. here we go. Okay, get her back. Got her. Okay. Got her. Oof da. Oh. oh, I knew she was gonna try to go on me. I hope you get a tape on her. Are we on the reef? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Take her quickly. Yeah, that's okay. Watch the boat if you would. Forty-nine and a half. Oh. Oh. It is not number 94, but it's 49 and a half, and what a gorgeous fish. What a beautiful fish. Look at that, huh? 49 and a half. <laughs> hey, they can go a half over just as easy as they can be a half under. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. She's out of here. <laughs>